The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis. And I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Um, McElroy. Want- <laughs> That's <laughs> good. A lag. You did get me on that. You got me on that ah, one. thanks. You did get me on that one. So I wanted to start, I, I, you know, I hate to do it, but oh? I've got to start a little political. Oh, man. Oh, uh, Again, did you say, Justin? Did you say political? Bullet- Time for ball. Bo- the- and then uh, to eat some biscotti. <laughs> Time for ball politics. So I did a tweet. Well, there's uh, your first mistake. I did a tweet because um, I wanted, because a question, I had like a hypothetical question. And I needed answers, right? And so I put this hypothetical out to the internet, and it received, before voting closed, 34,913 replies. Oh, wow. And I want to dig into this, and it got so much of a response. I wanted to dig into this question with you guys and really talk through some of the data. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Did you get ratioed? As, um, as the t- as the teens say, I don't think so. Okay, I don't okay. think it's a ratio. Can, can I? Teens are fucking wild about fractions, I guess, and I'm yeah. stoked. People always talking about like it's just phones, 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 but they're out here talking about ratios and Pythagoras. I thought it was radio, like patio. Okay, all right. So here's the tweet. Okay, that's the tweet. I, here's the tweet. I got a new hypothetical that's going to sweep the nation and add some sparkle to your next Zoom happy hour. If and here's it, and I want to pose it to you, my brothers. If you could consequence free spank Donald J. Trump mm-hmm. right on his behind uh-huh. on national TV, yeah, oh, would you do it? Please think, wow, before answering. Uh, bear think, ass? If, think, if you're think. about to start talking, I know you haven't thought about it. Yeah, no, I have a- bare ass question mark, bare ass, bare hand, skin this to skin. Is data. Contact is so this important. is data. I can't. I can't well, shift the Spiner parameters. Would definitely do it. I can't <sighs> shift the parameters of the question for you. This is the question that is put before you. You know, you my, do not have more information than I this. Th- any God fearing American trap, I think, is thinking about bare ass, bare hand. I okay. don't think there's anybody who thought about spanking this gentleman with his pants on. Not for the stuff he's accomplished. <laughs> no, sir, you do deserve a bare ass spanking. You know what? Let me say this. I'll. You know what? I'll, I will. I will. Since we're outside the, con- let me give you this data. Okay. With that. With that data. Okay. Before we drill down onto your personal responses, with that data, yeah. the internet said forty-four percent of internet respondents said okay. Oh. Fifty-six percent of internet respondents said no thanks. Huh. So that's where. Wow. That data. That's the data. Um, and I don't know if people thought about it enough because a lot of people were like, I'm, I think I'd catch some sort of slime disease from his butt. It's like, that's all very funny, yeah. but I'm trying to, well, I'm trying to do research is it and that's funny? probably not going to happen. Is it funny? Is it funny? It's not that long ago that this gentleman did have the Corona. And Here, if I said gentleman, I meant scoundrel. Here's what uh, I will say. Please? I got a big old flat hand. Oh God. And I believe... I could deliver a spanking as such that it would go beyond embarrassing. Oh. If I really put my full torque into it. Right. Into no. potentially damaging. Okay, you can't this is important because we're if you if it da- if the spank damages the body of the man that is the president of the country, uh-huh. then we are getting into some let's call it questionable legal territory. Okay, now okay. hold on, Justin. I uh, you didn't give further details, so I was assuming in this scenario this was a pur- purely consensual thing where Donald 
J. Trump. It's not consensual. Then I wouldn't there just do won't it. Be repercussions. <laughs> then it. Oh, then I. Okay. Then if there's not, not going to be repercussions. Listen. If, the, if he's, he's not going to. If no, you ask the question, and now you're not <laughs> listening. Listening to me, sir. 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 I did sir. not. I did not. The energy is just so bad. This is still my time, sir. If I may, I have to assume he is in some kind of stocks scenario. And oh, this has, like, been his preordained punishment. And someone said, do you want to, like, go to prison or get a spanking? And he was like, oh, of course a spanking. <laughs> and here I come with my big old, like, yeah. two by nine of a hand or whatever. Gonna fucking panini that ass. And yeah. And I come in there and he's like, I wish I had picked jail. This yeah. is what I'm saying is I think I could deliver. Because my butt's a manhole cover now. Yes. I think I could flatten man. him in such a way. To make his butt concave. Fucking Everlong over here just smashed my ass to, out of the That's galaxy. That's what I'm saying. I think that it would seem like a better alternative for him than yeah. whatever other punishment. But then here I come in and okay. shatter his coccyx. But I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't want to do it if, it's, if it d is the only repercussion that he gets for his... Again, many, many bad accomplishments. No. Um, because that I feels like letting him off lightly. And I also don't yeah. know if that is going to be the punishment if I should be the one to do it. I can think of many more people who have been more severely affected by his administration than myself. And so I would, if given the opportunity, I would almost certainly hand it down to somebody more deserving. Well, okay, you don't have that opportunity. You literally just have the president right. bent over. Right. And everyone, and like the nation is watching, right. the cameras are on, right? The, S the Secret Service is like, we don't enjoy him. We'll give you. They one. turn away <laughs> yeah. for like okay. a little bit, right? Exactly, blind eye, no repercussions, and like, here is what I would like to say that I don't think he does see it coming. I think he bent over to pick up a dime, and, and his, his pants fell down. His pants fell down, and there's his butt. No. See, I never. This is what's interesting. Author intent. I never anticipated bare ass. Well, then no. That see, if it's not bare ass, Justin, it's not embarrassing. Now I'm just a weirdo so who ran wild. up and spanked someone. <laughs> That's such a wild thing to say, because the he you the nation yeah. would have the visual of him getting spanked. But if it's his bare man. bottom, it's like he's a big baby, <laughs> and I'm spanking baby. his big baby bottom. But if wow. his if he's betrousered, then it, it doesn't have the same visual effect, Justin. Are we talking about hitting the president? You know? <laughs> no, that's why it has to be a spanking. And it can't be trousers injurious spank spanking. Is, a spank is a fucking hit, dog. I think <laughs> it's that, hit, I think but the, it's not. The, the three of us hold the same opinions vis-a-vis Spanking uh, yeah, as right. being a pretty heinous thing, and it's also it is it is hitting. So we are talking about doing a hit. The, okay, on the, there on the are president. two categories of spanking. There is consensual spanking Which betwixt is, yeah. partners right. who enjoy spanking one another or multiples. Yeah, and then there is injurious spanking, right. where you are striking another human being with the flat of your open hand. <sighs> I now, Go ahead. Which one is it that we're talking about now, here, Justin? Now, I did say, spanking or injurious spanking? I did say, now, if I could drill in on the language of the question, if you could consequence free, I feel like injury would be a consequence. Well, not to me. I didn't say that. Hmm. Well, didn't then say I, that. Didn't uh, say consequence free to you. I, said consequence free, period. To you and the spanky, who is the president of the United States of America, our 45th but, Donald But Justin, J. that's Trump. absolutely bullshit. That's wild, yeah. Because now I am having a neutral impact. It means I am so lightly touching his bottom that he might derive any, neither play, pain nor pleasure, or in fact, it sounds like lasting effect of any kind. It's, there's, a causal, there's a causal sort of relationship between Travis's huge, hu huge ape hand swinging low like a, like a big golf driver into our American president's butt. Uh, and, uh, and he will feel it. If not, then it's like Travis is a ghost. Unless Justin unless... is describing an Adam Sandler-esque scenario in which he Always. bends down to pick up some kind of dime, and I'm standing behind him pretending to smack that ass. You, no, um, no, it's more it's more humiliating than that. Then he's That's, gonna feel it. He's Justin. gonna feel I it. I didn't say he wouldn't feel it. I said he wouldn't be injured. There wouldn't be a permanent butt injury. Because if I say, "Would you like to injure the president?" Everybody on Earth 
would say absolutely. I would love that. But that's not what I'm talking okay. about. I'm talking about giving the president a, a big old spank right on his bottom as hard as you can. I did as just, hard as I can. You just said the words as said hard it. as I can. It's going to be bad for Travis to do it. I did just want to say real quick that I did mention ghosts, but ghosts are famously um, against spanking because they they just don't stand for corporeal punishment. Would you? Oh, wait, oh, stop. Oh, boy. Yes. Oh, boy. Yes, I do think so, Griffin. I think so. What are you guys making this data? 56% of uh, respondents uh, would 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 pass on the opportunity to spank the president. I, I will say, until I landed on, I want to hurt him with my strike. Then my first thought was, I do not want to be in the same room. A, a lot him. of that energy, yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I just don't. I don't want to touch his bad butt. I'm. <laughs> I'm thinking it's not, and I don't want to. I'm not gonna body shame anybody, but like, it's I, not high on the list for me. You know what I mean? I. I actually also took a poll on Twitter uh, on the 18th. I asked, uh, irony aside, where are we at on the Greatest Showman? And I got uh, eleven thousand responses. Okay. Um. Do you guys want to guess? Like yay or nay, what what the percentages were? It's got to be. I'm gonna say seventy percent yay because America still has a heart. They have, uh, or the globe, I guess in this case, has a heart. They got a pulse. They're loving it. What yeah. about you, Griff? Um, yeah, I haven't seen the film because it seems so bad. It was almost completely split down the middle. Fifty two percent yes, forty eight percent no. Incorrect. So mm. more people enjoy, unironically, the greatest show and then want to strike the president's bottom. Yeah, I got a Twitter poll out there, and it says, "Bye, guys. I'm off to see Deadpool two in theaters um, because it's it has been so long since I did a tweet." So, if anyone ever asks you what is like a perfectly like new like average neutral movie, it's The Greatest Showman. It cancels. It almost perfectly cancels out half the people do not like it. Half the people like it. Greatest Showman, right down the middle. That's actually was the tagline of Greatest Showman, right down the middle. Um, that wasn't really germane to my intro. I think you just wanted to change the subject. I so did. I'm, I was sick of talking about either attacking get the a American vote. president. Can I, just get a, can I just get a yay or nay real quick? Given the opportunity, the mm -hmm. consequence free, with the American people watching. Is that in the text of the tweet, Justin, the American Ooh, people watching? It's on, Ooh, the, it's the on American national people, TV, okay. but uh, America has the right to tune in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is a huge opportunity then, because I'll, I'll get on there and whatever, spank his ass or his bad ass or whatever, and then when I'm doing it, I could be like, and here's the link to my mixtape, and I can say You're it out right. loud. And yeah, check I, out my my brother, my brother, and me, go check it at McElroyFamily.com. Check out my shows. Should be good for our, our uh, iTunes reviews. Should be a good... <laughs> Good journey we'd go on as a result of that. Yeah, I would. negative three stars. I'm not going to listen to this. I Doctor Skinhead for <laughs> for Tony X X X says it's just snowflake garbage. Justin, I kind of feel like I already did smack Donald Trump's ass because I voted for Joe Biden early, which I recommend I everybody do. Yeah, I mean you can do that, but there's only one spank. You know what I mean? Yeah, but there's I, only one spank opportunity. I was trying to take whatever this has been. And yeah. spin it, make it get some something kind positive. of thing. Yeah, I'll vote for Joe Biden early. It's going to be fucking crazy on voting day. G it's be get your wild. shit in now. Go in now. Vote for Joe Biden. Don't hit people. Spanking doesn't help raise children. Help but, anybody, but if I had the opportunity, yes, Justin, I would smack that ass. Okay, I'd, I would give Joseph Gordon Biden a tight little keister a go. Well, I'd give it okay, a little that's in no way German. That's disgusting. that would be a Griffin. smack, but that would be a spank of pleasure. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, gosh. that's just like a little good game, bud. Yeah, good I'd going, but way to get good. way to get elected president, bud. Good yep. going, bud. Let's good tighten going, up. Bud. Let's tighten up those policies just a bit, just bud. A bit. Hey, let yeah, me yeah, nudge him. Let me do the nudge him. If you think about it, there's room to improve, bud. Bud, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap your left butt cheek, Joe. That tight left butt. You follow that tap. Just to let you know that that's the direction. You should maybe angle it towards it, Joey. Hey, maybe a single spanker healthcare. I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right, kind of Justin. We, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so this is a advice show that runs a little bit political <laughs> from time to time, Well, I guess. we are not going to have an episode next week, uh, the week of the election. So we got to get all that shit out of our system now.
There you go. Go vote for Joe Biden if you care about <laughs> anything, and you can. Like, obviously, if you're in England, you don't need to tweet me. I get it. Um, so. Oh, man, we could have talked about Borat. Fuck. Fuck. Um, yeah, that sucks, because Borat's like, it's funny. It's funny how Borat, by making him relevant again, made him ir- irrelevant to us. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we're making true. Borat relevant he's now irrelevant from a comedy perspective Justin can you uh, give us a 21 my wife salute just to like see that phrase like off your soundboard yeah I've, just play my that wife, my wife my wife my wife my wife my wife it's not 21 that's but six needs that. that's six we'll do we'll do 15 more throughout the show I'm sure okay. I'm gonna miss it it's just not funny no more it's not funny anymore yeah. It's not funny anymore. God, I hope they don't reboot Frasier. <laughs> please don't take oh, that away God, from us. No. Please. Like, I know Try. we've said AP4, and, like, we would get there, like, day one in theaters, but please don't. Please, Mike, don't get AP4 in theaters. Please, bud. Uh, this is an advice show, and now what? it's time. Yeah, it's time to answer a question. The office I work at is having a Halloween party with a costume contest. Nice. The pr- prizes for said contest are first place gets a month's paid rent what second place gets a paid vacation anywhere in the continental united what states what the fuck third place is you're fired <laughs> uh, weirdly fourth mean... for every place after third place is just no prize but if you get if for whatever reason second runner up hit the fucking bricks dude now i don't mean to brag but i've had some luck with costume contests in the past and i have confidence that could win however i do not live in a place that charges rent and I'd really love a vacation. Oh my god, brothers! What costume should I wear to guarantee second place? That's from Haphazardly Happy Halloween in Houston. This is an amazing, amazing, that's, amazing. Question. That's really so friggin' difficult. This feels like a fucking yeah. Taskmaster challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, there's a worry here that if you underplay it too much, you don't play second, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I um. Okay, here's where my here's where my gut is at mm-hmm. is if there's somebody in the office who is going to do something like very intricate and very like technical but maybe not like the most creative thing but they would feel guilty not giving them first place, right? Then you need to clock in just just below that. So maybe you do like a really funny clever costume. Mm. But not mm. like one that is necessarily technically artistically proficient. I was thinking the same thing, but here's the the, the trick with that, Griffin, is yeah. if the joke ends up landing too well, now you're a crowd favorite and uh. it's like, well, it's not it's not as good like technically, but it's bringing the most joy to everybody. I think we know who the winner is. Well, then you flip it, right? Then you do the other one. You just got to know your office and know are they going to reward creativity or are they going to reward the fact that you dressed up like fucking Kim Bone again for the fourth year in a row. <laughs> Man, you tell I hope me. They don't like, you could go as the the fly on Pence's hair. Right? Funny! Funny! Oh, see, but right there, that reaction from you guys trumps Jerry's photorealistic Transformers outfit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, here's what I, here's, here's what I got for you. Okay. Okay. You need to create an incredibly uh, accurate, detailed uh, costume. Okay. I'm going to use, for this example, Captain Jack Sparrow. So you do the perfect Captain Jack Sparrow look, right? Mm. And then you go into the office the night before, and you sleep in the bathroom. Okay. Okay. When people come in, they're going to change into their costume in the bathroom, right? And I need you to keep an eye on them the, in the bathroom, Justin. What them what? in the bathroom? Is that what you're saying? Keep an eye on people coming and going from the bathroom. Okay. When you see the person who has the best costume, it won't be as richly detailed as your Captain Jack Sparrow costume. Of course, that's important. Mm. They can't naturally beat you. But then you can start to remove items from your costume uh-huh. to get you a let so right so like. Maybe you just are going to remove a few of the beads from your hair. 
you know, maybe you're going to get the red band. You'll leave the tri corner, but you won't have that distinctive red bandana under the tri corner. You see what I'm saying? You, yes. Uh, you, you, your eyeliner. Get rid of the no, eyeliner. No, please don't. You can't lose the eyeliner, or it'll just be a pirate. Just it's just a bad office. I mean, like if you have to lose the eyeliner, it's, it's a bad, bad office eye. that you work in, and you should probably, honestly, your real answer is you need to find a new, a new job. Yeah. If no one can be. If you have to take off the eyeliner, like what is what are they bringing to this? You know, like what are they even doing? Now, what you could also do is the day before the party, start talking about what a rough time Jerry's having. Yes. Just yes. To, like just spread around Jerry's having a hard time. Yeah. You know, he just has it hasn't been clicking for Jerry lately. And then when the contest comes, just keep like Pointing at Jerry and nodding to everybody, right? Yeah. Or even better, if you win, yes, then you're yes. just like, no, yes, I'll, I'll take no. second. Jerry no. needs this. Not Jerry. Look at that you very look at funny. Jerry. He's look at Jerry's funny Kim Bone costume. He's him. got the red sweater. You know what kind of year he's having? Let's hear it for our first responders. J- what? <laughs> what? What did you say? Hear it for our front line workers. Jerry's not, this is a fucking <laughs> staple. No, Jerry, yeah, what are you talking about? Jerry unloads the truck. Yeah, but I think we all know that of everyone on Earth, this year has been hardest on Jerry. Now, I'm going to challenge your s- suggestion that Staples employees are not essential workers. But now more than ever, we're working out of the home and we need mice. We need floor mats. We need post-it notes. I don't and- even know what toner does, but I yeah. don't want to work without it. I want to say thank you to our Staples employees. Office, Max, Office Depot, fuck off. Yep. I'm going to Staples. That's right. Now. Sorry. I like that Staples started with one product and expanded from there. It's bold. I'm just saying that because we don't have a Staples in Huntington. We oh, you poor bastards. Depot. I know. I know. I'm still team. Hashtag Radio Shack. <laughs> yeah, they're coming back. Do you guys want a Yahoo? There's a Radio Shack next to the Long John Silver's mm. on Fifth Avenue. You guys know what down near yes. Huntington East? Yes, I, right I, near the Magic Wall. I bought some exotic batteries from there once. <laughs> yeah, now both the Long John Silver's and the Radio Shack close, and it's just two abandoned fossils right next to each other. It's really a sad. You think they? You boy. think they're going to come by and lift each other up? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Is do you think they could have if they had just made it work? Like, please see if right if if Long John Silver's had had any fucking foresight, they would have been like, "Listen, man, I know you're going through a hard time. You can crash in our building. Mm-hmm. Just go to the back. And there's a little radio. Come on down shack. to Long Radio John Shack, and we are gonna treat you to batteries and cod, <laughs> deep fried batteries, six mm. for yum, yum, four dollars. Come get Griffin. You know, fish at Long John Silver's is not of any discernible species. Yeah." yeah. Come get uh, this chopped, reconstituted fish product and get some free y'all, loose wires. Y'all f- I th- forgot this her. is going to feel like a munch squad, but but Long John Silver's, I've noticed, uh, has been trying. Inc- I, I drive past their sign, the one Route 60, when I'm going to the liquor store, and okay. they've been trying increasingly like highfalutin uh, 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 seafood meals. And the funny thing about it is the, the more they aspire, the more repellent it is. Like the harder they go, the less appetizing it is. Like when they're like, uh, we got um we got a lobster roll now. Like, I don't think you actually <laughs> do. I don't think I will be doing that with you right now. This is the worst part. On this show, yeah, every time we talk about any kind of fast food, I want it so bad now. I would yeah. crush y'all some are, Long John Silvers. Y'all are acting above your raisin. Fucking Long John Silvers used to be a special fucking treat for us on our way to church. Most it's of the time we get the Taco funny. Bell, but then, like, you know, when we did good grades on our report card, we take it to Long John Silvers, get some, some get some free crispy strippings. Sometimes mom would let me, uh, once I discovered that I could order a side of Crunchies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, she would do it and then be disgusted with me now, which yeah. I used to love. Yeah. Justin, you oh, say Justin. crunchies, like do you mean the little bits and bobs of batter that just floated around in the oil for a long batter bob, time? Batter bobs. Yeah, batter bobs. batter bobs, crunchies, I mean whatever you call them, they're you can order a side of them. Come on. They they don't oh, they don't get Come a on down along radio John Shack, we got batter bobs and batteries. Do you guys want a Yahoo please? Yeah. It's yeah, sent by that. Graham Roebuck, thank you. It's a Yahoo user who is anonymous cuz they're afraid of me. Uh, but I'm going to call them uh, Davis asks, I feel like I use that fucking name a lot, huh? Hmm. 
If humans had beaks instead mm-hmm. of noses, would we still kiss? Mm. Huh. Okay, so kissing is weird, right? If you think about it. Are you but, saying that or is Davis saying that? Davis is saying that. I would never say that. You know I love to kiss. Yes, I do. But we do it and we like it. But would we, even if we had beaks, how would we kiss then? Why don't birds kiss? <laughs> how do you fucking know they don't, Davis? <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're just not into yeah. PDAs. Maybe birds wait until they're at home in private to do their bird smooching. And they make up for lost time if if you know what I'm playing. Yeah, maybe birds just don't like foreplay. Maybe just mm. like you're, uh, across the board, all birds are like, listen, if we're smooching, we could be boning. Yeah. We have hollow bones and we only live for like six days or whatever. Travis doesn't know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yikes. That's they don't live good. as long as we do. Certainly not. Yeah, so we can all six days that. is a pretty good estimate, I think, of their Here's age. What, my point is that we as human beings, yeah. Could live upwards of, I believe, 112 years. That's what I'm aiming for. And so we look at every other animal's like habits through that lens and we're like, yeah. why aren't they blah blah blah? And it's like, for all you know, that bird is like, I don't have time for kissing. Are you kidding me? Um, I got ten years, dude. That's possible. So I there's a thing in this question I didn't notice until just now. And it is if this is the question: If humans had beaks instead of noses, would we still kiss? Does this presuppose that we would still have our mouths? Huh? And like but then be... instead of our nose, we would have a, a beak there, so we'd have a sort of mouth stack. I can't, I simply can't believe that that's true, Griffin, because that crosses into a level of horror. That, yeah, that I believe goes beyond like logistically like could we still kiss but yeah. then again it does say would we still kiss okay but yes listen this is halloween baby Ooh, you could do a kiss with both your mouths at the same time or there would probably be people who would want to flip it upside down do a little mouth mouth to mouth to mouth to mouth sort of 69 situation <laughs> Mm-hmm. Person uh-huh. on bird on That's person it. on bird. It's just called elevens at that point. It's they, they do they do elevens with the bird mouths. Do, okay, is now, that that would be? I feel like that would be bad because your bird mouth would have to eat worms. Uh huh. Well, let me put it this way, Griffin. Let me add another layer to this question. What if you replaced human beings' noses with beaks, but beaks that they were not in control of? Would you still kiss? Oh, so like I would go in and be like, "Do you, Griffin? You you may now kiss the bride." Like, I yeah. have no control over. Please, please. It's This is my special day. Please calm down, beak nose. But then that's wild, because the whole audience for my rad wedding would just be like, like, you wouldn't go, you'd be able to go anywhere. With well, a, okay, with a you can people. also fly. Ooh. This is, no, you can't fly. Well, there has to be some benefit. That's what this, you can't say. No, I more, stinky, like, no more stinky smells. Yeah, but no more mm. pleasant smells either, Griffin. Mm. You heard what I said about 69 with the bird mouths, right? <laughs> yeah, that's very good. <laughs> that was very good. I think you might have said And you that. could access grubs and stuff hidden inside of bark. Okay, I, okay. I would appreciate that. L- then let's just, let's return to the pleasant, less problematic waters of just one big bird mouth. You're a fucking, you're You got Falco. a Baldwin. You got an Alec Baldwin from uh, Beetlejuice. No, not, okay. not 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 no no what I'm when I'm talking about a beak you're imagining like a fucking like crocodile maw no. that's like a foot and a half long no I'm you're at like Zubilee Zoo territory yeah that's oh no good. like a cute we're talking like a chickadee's beak and not like a like a pelican or something N- yeah right what you just said um mm. do you think we would still be like into kissing I don't think so I think we like the sort of pliability of mouth. I mean, yes, but I think that you couldn't make this decision for everyone all at once. Because I think that there would be people who would be way into, like, I can open my mouth and kiss you, like, three times as deep now. It, yeah. like It's like a handshake at this point. We're getting in there so deep. But I don't think that's going to be the goal when you do your beak, your beak kisses. When you see birds doing that to each other, Travis, they're... That's probably a sort of regurgitation situation. Well, I mean, then that seems like two benefits, Griffin. I wouldn't want that. I don't think. Hey, uh, could I take you out for dinner? I just met you. I just, yeah. Um, 
it's hard for me to get past the fact that I don't want to kiss a big bird. Yeah. But you I'm don't want to kiss a big bird? I, I'm thinking about that with my human brain, exactly. which is attached Your to my fleshy system. mouth. Right. Yeah. Now, assume Big Bird has grown up and gotten a job. Perhaps. I hate this. <laughs> Big Bird works. Um, let's see. Uh, give me the name of some place someone would work. Uh, Griffin. I, uh, no, I'm not going to take a part in any of this. I'm you don't want at, Big Bird to get a job. You want Big Bird to be unemployed in this I'm, economy. Big Bird, I'm, Big Bird would be sweet as Big Bird got to be a pilot, and then air traffic control would be like, oh, "Big Bird, go ahead and bring it in." At the, and he's like, "You don't tell me what to do. I'm a Lord of the Skies. You're going to tell me how to fly. Shut up." And then he turned the radio off and just do his own thing. Okay, so Big Bird has just gotten back uh, from a turnaround trip, flew from Cincinnati to LA, and then back. Uh, no, so baby, that, he's he's no 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 baby he's 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 out across the Atlantic he's doing the bit the big bird needs the big bird you know what I'm saying? Well, he, what I'm saying is he came right back because he missed me, right? And he didn't say okay. he could have had two days over there in Paris and said he was like I gotta get home to Travis. He comes home, that's so nice, and he leans in for a kiss. What am I gonna do? Not smooch that beak? Yeah, yeah. he came home from Paris, Griffin. <laughs> Griffin hey. came over, but he could have stayed in Paris for 48 hours. He had earned it. He had flown there. He took the jump seat back. You know how is, uncomfortable that is. Wait, is this is this pre or during COVID? This is after COVID is done. Okay, so we've actually gotten through all that. Yeah. I'd kiss anything that moves if COVID is over. I don't care. Yeah. I'll kiss anything. The, the year is, uh, the month is April 2021. Oh, that's nice. Uh, COVID is over, officially. Oh, nice. oh, okay. Yeah. And Big Bird has returned from Paris. And what's that? He brought me a baguette. And because of the quick turnaround, it's still a little warm. And yeah. he leans, oh, oh. And it's one of those, like, ham and butter sandwiches that are so fucking good. And he- Croque monsieur. And no, I think it's just jamon. And he leans in to give me a smooch. What am I going to do, Griffin? Kick him out? Gotta turn smooch. him away? Got a smooch, big bird. I'm a smooch, a big you bird. You don't need to. But, oh. But, 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 if Falco Lombardi from Star Fox came around, I don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I don't know. I have one option to get us out of this, and that is for me to say it, it's time to go to the money zone. No. Get on my back. Come on. We're getting out of here, guys. On the wings of land. I have incredible vision, okay. and so I'm the only one on this show you can trust to read this ad copy and tell you that Warby Parker is a great way to get glasses. Take it from me. Warby Parker is offering boutique quality eyewear at a revolutionary price point. They've got eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores. Uh, Justin, I wear glasses. Uh, fr- oh no! But I wear the I wear. The- I didn't know. I'm sorry, Travis. God, how embarrassing that is for me. No, it's okay, Justin, because I can read this copy too. Because it's I- not okay. You're still my brother. But I'm wearing Warby Parker glasses right now, so I can see. I did the home try on program. I don't know if anyone has ever noticed this about me ever, but I have a large head, and so I ordered the the glasses through the home try on program to make sure that they physically fit around mm-hmm. the girl of my skull mm-hmm. uh, and several of them did and I was very excited about this so I yeah. bought the ones that did you know what they say about you know what they say about big have a big head hard to find hats nope okay the other, th- the other thing <laughs> uh, wide ears <laughs> yeah you keep acting like you don't know my big dick <laughs> Well, thanks for the ad revenue, Warby Parker. <laughs> you can try their free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses. Try it home for free for five days. There's a no obligation to buy. Ship free and includes they are prepaid. Good the glasses. <laughs> free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash my brother. Now, it doesn't say this is a limited time thing, but considering the content of this ad, I bet that link's going to go dead pretty quick. So go ahead and head on over to warbyparker.com slash my brother and show them that that is the kind of thing that gets a response from our people. Real quick, let's talk about honey. Honey is the rad little doodad that you get on your computer, and then whenever you're shopping, it uh, looks for promo codes 
And if it finds one for whatever it is that you're buying, it'll put it in there right away, and it's automatic, and it saves you money. And real Holy quick, Holy shit. And real quick, just real quick. Hey, I got, yeah, I got a big dick. And see, I feel like it would be unfair if we did one for Warby Parker and we did not do one for Honey. There's not much else to add because that's how simple Honey is. It's a little browser extension that looks for promo codes for you. And it, I use I, it and I've saved money on like uh, music software and like tons right. of tons of cash. It just saves you money. It's fantastic. I got a uh, replacement plate for my um, uh, router table from Craig. Had to get a uh, new one that fit my Triton. Uh, router, oh my God. and because uh, I did one with pre-drilled holes, and I did—I mean, I made my own, but I, I thought it'd be a little bit better fit if I got one that was custom for the for the router, and um, I, I managed to save a little cash using Honey. Yeah, so that's all it is. It's free, and you can join it for free today at joinhoney.com/brother. That's joinhoney.com/brother. Hi. Are you someone who thinks that when one door closes, another one opens? Someone who always sees the light at the end of the tunnel. If you answered yes to one or both of these questions, good for you. We are not those people. Nope. I'm Annabelle Gerwich, and I'm a, you know that other door opening? It probably leads to a broom closet kind of person. And I'm Laura House. When I see a light at the end of a tunnel, I assume it's a train headed right toward me. Laura and I have created a brand new podcast for people like us. It's called Tiny Victories. We're sharing personal tiny victories or things we've read or seen that inspire resilience. So if you're looking for a tiny reason to get out of bed each week, subscribe to Tiny Victories. Available on Maximum Fun or wherever you get your podcasts. Let's get tiny. Hey. I want a munch. I want. Only 14 more to go. Romantic. Hello, welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast profile. Latest, greatest in brand eating. There is nothing that you can say in this segment that's going to top you ordering the fried fish leavings that you used to order a box of. That's true. Uh, I do want to say a couple things. Uh, I, like um, like our friend Lynn, ordered the ghost pepper donut that we talked about last time. Oh, how was that? It was not bad. How was the spice? Not as spicy as you want, but it's a little bit of a spice. It gets you on the back end. You're like, whoa, hello. Now, did you eat the whole thing? Yes, I ate the whole thing. Because Lynn appeared to take one bite. Yeah. And then bag if you want to watch Living Legend, Lynn Manuel Miranda eat a ghost pepper donut, it's on our YouTube channel. His Matt mouth, family. his mouth is more valuable than Justin's mouth. That is true. God yeah. knows that's Fair. true. And dangerous. Um, this is a this is a uh, bagel notice. Just a bagel alert. Oh, Einstein you. Brothers Bagels uh, introduces new. This is really. Can I say it's like it's gonna be really fun? You know what I mean? Because we could all use something a little bit fun. Of course. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So Einstein. Brothers Bagels introduces you to new party bagels. Oh. Ar- arriving at select locations nationwide uh, November 12th. Fuck Ready yeah. to show your sweet tooth a good time. Wait, can we guess? I don't want to guess. I, I, I want to start the party. Uh, no, it's just a party bagels. Is it frosted? Thing. Just, uh, I'll just tell you, it's party bagels. Um, all Einstein Brothers Bagels wants to do is have some fun, <laughs> just like everyone else this year. Yep, uh-huh. fucking even, even... It is like obligatory. You cannot announce a new fast food item without saying like, because of COVID, we're just trying to have some fun, okay? Well, if- so yes, we're acknowledging the the ongoing pandemic in our press release about party bagels. The new party bagels are shaking things up, raising the roof of the bagel case, oh if you will. Oh boy! With the promise of a sweet indulgence that will bring a smile to faces young and old. I'm having I'm having fucking fun already. I know, it's already really fun. Einstein Brothers Bagels had developed two flavors that will make your taste buds sing sweet praises. Oh? To who? Jesus? To Christ? There, there's <laughs> churro, which starts with a donut. <laughs> You're fucking... Huh. Okay. Huh. You, just, that's, you just drop that you, in a fucking chemical bath? Or what's up? No, it's it's a donut. And they smear it in the middle with sweet cream cheese, buttercream frosting, so- and coat it on top with cinnamon sugar. It will take you back to roller coasters and carnival games. Uh, and, I, and then there's th- I would the- love to be in the R and D meeting for Einstein Brothers where they're like, uh, yeah, but this is just a donut. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But get this, yeah, we call it a bagel. 
Well, right. It's a. That, it's a, not a donut. It's a party bagel. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah. They'll never know. We better not call it a donut in the press release. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be a big fuck up. Yeah. Chocolate birthday cake starts with a donut. Uh-huh. Sliced and smeared in the middle with chocolate buttercream frosting, glazed with chocolate frosting, and topped with confetti sprinkles. Yeah. If it isn't your birthday, it will feel like it is. So, <laughs> yeah, that's right, friend. Now you can have the visceral thrill of spending your birthday at Einstein Brothers Bagels. Or even better, at your house in lockdown, eating a donut by yourself. We wanted to bring, this is a quote from Chad Thompson. Head of Culinary Innovations at Einstein Brothers Bagels, which in this case is uh, selling donuts, <laughs> is the culinary innovation here. We wanted to bring a bit of fun to the breakfast table. Um, party bagels are a sweet treat <laughs> done the Einstein Brothers Bagel way that the whole family will love. It's, um, guys, it's donuts. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it just feels like if you're fuck, if your company's going to be called fucking Einstein in it, the name of it, you're, when you do things, when you make brand choices, they got to be smart in some way. Fucking Einstein would never look at a bagel and be like, what is this? Some sort of party donut? I got it backwards, but you get the point. It does, it does, Okay, it does imply that up till now, every other bagel has been oh, well, fucking like, work has been bagels. work bagels, <laughs> has right. been business bagels, business. It's a uh, it's been business. Or no, it would be business, business, donuts? Business, yeah. business donuts. Yeah, business donuts. Business donuts. Right. Business donuts. Party bagels. Yes. <laughs> I heard you were discussing donuts. Oh, boy. Uh, cool. He's back. Hey. Count, hello. Count I have donut? such a pleasure to be invited back. It's me, Count Donut. Um, Count Hi. Donut, I'm, I'm not really plugged into social anymore, so I don't really know how our fans felt about your sort of uh, occupation The only of the thing last they episode. could discuss was that Justin's compression settings were wrong on his soundboard. Okay, well... But that should be... What fixed. does it sound like uh, with, uh, with a Transylvania accent when you say nonplus? <laughs> I think everybody loved me, and I am here not... With donut news, although you have summoned me by discussing donuts. Oh, sorry. It's actually your Count Party Bagel now. Yeah. Count Party Bagel is here to tell you about new innovation from Heinz. Okay. From ketchup dip fries as vampire fangs to hot dog fingers dripping in ketchup. For years, fans have used Heinz ketchup to add deliciously convincing blood to their Halloween celebrations. I'm salivating already. Uh, It's ketchup, though. Yeah, has anyone done either of those things? Now, ahead of what is sure to be a different kind of Halloween celebration... The brand is debuting a Heinz tomato blood ketchup. What? To contribute to the spooky fun. (laughs) Wait, huh? I'm going to be sick. Fans have had to navigate a lot this year, and (laughs) Halloween is no exception, said Shelly Hayden, the brand manager for Heinz ketchup, making the obligatory reference to COVID-19 in the context of... Heinz tomato blood. Does it, it? Does that sentence end with, and we're just going to throw this fucking thing on top of the pile? Hey, you've already dealt with so many other things. What's one more thing? Blood chub. <laughs> I, I hope that, with- that for many, many reasons that the pandemic doesn't go on for a long time because it would reach a point where in these press releases, uh, like the second paragraph would just start with, you know, so... You, Here Travis, we are. Are you fu- as soon as we lick this thing? Do you know that we're gonna have a good two years at the minimum of just like we're back, our doors are open, family, community. That's Finally, right. You can Get, lick the counters again. Lick the counters, baby. It's Hardee's, like <laughs> nonstop. Now you eat the hamburgers from our hands. Thank you, first responders, frontline workers. Come by a fucking Chevy. With Heinz tomato blood ketchup, 
We wanted to give families a fun way to go big with their spooky celebrations, even if they look a little different in 2020. Hey, Shelly, fuck you! <laughs> Seriously, that's two in one quote. We get it. Things are bad. What were you saying about ketchup? Thanks for the reminder, though, about the ongoing pandemic. The limited edition bottles are filled with the delicious, thick and rich Heinz ketchup mm. fans know and love. In a spooky Halloween-themed bottle that even vampires would envy. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Uh, just to clarify from that sentence, you just said it's just regular ketchup in the bottle, but this is a different label? Yes, Travis, the Heinz Ketchup Company is distracting you from 200,000-plus Americans dead of COVID by putting a different sticker on the ketchup. This should fix it, right? Okay. I mean, well, for the last, my spirits are lifted. For the last minute and a half, I've, it's sort of occupied a majority of my brain space, so I guess I do have Heinz to think about that. Can't wait to sink your teeth in the Heinz tomato blood ketchup from now until October 31st at 11.59 p.m. CDT. It's fun that they have to specify the time zone as if you're waiting until within the last two hours of the promotion Good to get in there. They're giving away 570 bottles of Heinz tomato ketchup to those who participate in a TikTok hashtag challenge oh, launching shit. Friday, October 23rd. Um, I guarantee you <clears throat> that the original amount was 57 and they thought that's not enough. That's not enough bottles. Not enough. And now 570. That will fix the ongoing national malaise. Um, count, count party donut. I got to uh, tell you great news. Party. Part of the, uh, I believe, part of the. Oh, bagel. sorry. Um, see, in my mind, they've, the Einstein brothers have succeeded in making these two foods completely interchangeable. But um, if this doesn't do it for you, Count Party Bagel, you can get the Ed Sheeran one that looks like his arm, and mm -hmm. then you can just chomp right into that, imagining that you are draining the viscera from beloved singer songwriter Ed Sheeran. This promotion started on October 23rd. Can I ask our TikTok correspondent, Travis McElroy, to check for Heinz Halloween hashtag videos? I've already seen it count. <laughs> it's been on everything, and I can honestly say none of them have had anything to do with condiments of any sort. People are just slapping that shit on their twerking videos or whatever. Hmm. Are they twerking on the about to lift ketchup? No, that's the thing. The, I uh, maybe there's a, a bottle present just off screen, but I have been scanning every inch of those twerking videos looking for ketchup, and I have seen nothing. Well, there's a there's a sticker, by the way. I wanted to quickly describe it. It says Heinz Tomato Blood on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it. Okay. <laughs> Does that help your family celebrate Halloween no more? It doesn't hurt. Does that turn things around for you? Sure. At the bottom of the press release, I just wanted to mention one more thing before I disappear into the night. Heinz can confirm that only the juiciest, ripest tomatoes were harmed in the making of delicious Heinz tomato blood ketchup. Gross. Why is that the line that took it too That's far for me? fucking perverts. Yeah, now... I think they are trying to... Cl That's an asterisk. I think they're trying to clarify that the product contains no blood. Oh. That's good that they cleared that it's up. Good. It's good that the, anyway, I have to go, fellas. Let me know if I am needed again to help distract you from the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. I, I'm, I'll miss you, Count. Pardon I'll miss him, too. What? I'll miss get, you. get out of it. Just go. Well, that are you sure? Because I could. No, still you need out. to go. Count. The sun's coming up. That's okay. I I just glisten in the light. Uh, no, it's that. But there's a. It's a high goodbye. UV index. UV index. Is that a, crickets? Terrible, hey terrible bat. He makes the worst bat noises when he. Yeah, it's really unpleasant. I was uh, doing something else, <laughs> and then I heard the bat yeah, playing Hades. He left. Yeah, yeah. No, I was sitting in the uh, uh, chair opposite, just staring Looking at him. 
Yeah, he's his, under his thrall. Do you want a Yahoo? A real well, quick I want one? Justin to do this next question. It's not the kind of question we normally do, and I think we can knock it out pretty quick. Okay. At what point does an aquarium become a zoo? The aquarium near me has three sloths, which I never thought was weird until I was talking to a friend about it, and she thought it was super weird that there were land animals and birds at the aquarium. How many land animals is too many land animals for an aquarium? At what point does it become a zoo? Or is there a midpoint where it is a zooquarium? That's from Elizabeth from Maryland. Hmm. Huh. Well, um, the only thing I have to go on for this one is the Austin Aquarium, sure. which I think I've talked about on this or other shows before. It, it is a blighted sort of hell zone. Uh, it's the worst building. It's an old sort of TJ Maxx that they crammed a bunch of sick old turtles inside. And then they yeah. started to put kiddie pools full of fish that they bought at Petland in there too. And then they threw in uh, about a trillion parrots. And then for good measure, they were like, let's get some lemurs in there, baby, and put them in the lobby. So it greets people in our fish zoo. But then people come in and little girl sticks her hand in, does get bit. And then the parents are like, we're suing you. And they were like, the lemur was not vaccinated. And then the parents were like, we're wicked suing you a lot now. I think that you can, I think aquariums should have fish and zoos get everything else. Yeah, just let them, yeah, just let them keep, keep everything else. It seems unless, there's so, no, there's so many unless, all kinds of fish. Unless, damn it. Unless. The sloths and the birds are always swimming around. That's cute. That's yeah, cute. you don't give them no land. That's cute. I do like that. But they, wait, you never let them get out of the water? Because the, turn, um, the turnaround rate on those sloths, Travis, is going to... The overhead... Oh, your sloth <laughs> in money is... Your sloth budget's going to really break the bank, I'm worried. You give them a rock, but slowly it gets hotter and hotter while they stand on it. I see. So now it's a saw trap. <laughs> now, I, mm. this isn't even funny, because this is horrible animal abuse, what I'm yes, describing. It's horrible. It's horrible. Not it's right. terrible. terrible. I think there's so many different kinds of things that live in the water, right? Yeah. That, uh-huh. that, uh, it's More a, than we know about. Join me as we journey through the blue planet. It's not... It's part of our planet. The ocean's not a different planet. It is. It's a different planet where the fish and the mermen live. I hate that when David Attenborough's like, there's another world below the surface of the... There's not, David. That's, uh, just that's our, our water. Just all that's our American water. Justin, water. was that your impression of me, David Attenborough? Because it sounded like my impression of Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm saying the pivot from having Dracula here, Donut Dracula, sorry, Party Bagel Dracula, here in my office to having David Attenborough in the yes. office was a bit of a it was a bit of a swing. while i'm here do you have any questions about fish have you ever been to uh, yeah i'll bite no, no griffin shut up this is a huge opportunity for all right us. yes i'm I was, quite I'm, the get i mean i was gonna ask him a question oh go for it yeah sorry i thought you were dismissing no it. david yeah, have you ever been to the austin aquarium david it's quite great yes i own the austin aquarium and i did oh. not appreciate the slander you were talking about can i do feedback do you do feedback I didn't see a feedback box. Uh, yes. Maybe I could do it here. Okay, I saw a turtle trying to climb over a rock, but it flipped upside down. And yes, it was that's also part of the show. But no one did anything <laughs> about it. That turtle has to learn self reliance. Hey, David, can I bother you about the Austin Aquarium for a yes, second? Yes, of course. Don't you think it's kind of confusing to have a young woman dressed as a mermaid doing face paint yeah. there in a place that is about the undersea life? Don't no. you think that's kind of confusing? Now, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You said dressed as. I, I have to disagree with you there. She is an actual mermaid. Uh, okay, but what about the one that I did see doing face paint that was dressed up as Anna from Frozen? Mm-hmm. That is, all of that is set underwater. It's not, Dave. Frozen is an underwater movie. Dave, it's not. No. It's above mm, Which one am I wa- thinking of? In Little, Little Mermaid is the only one that springs to mind immediately, yes. Mr. Adam. Okay. Um, I think I that- love that one with the crab. Why didn't you, like, v- vaccinate the lemur, though, bud? I tried, and the lemur said he didn't want it. And then he said, I'd like to move it, move it, which I really appreciate. <laughs> 
I, I'll give. I'll let you buy on that one. I would forget too if I saw the lemur doing a cool dance. Okay, now I have to go. I'll mount up on my dragon, and away we go. <laughs> Sorry, David, if you could come back to Earth for one second. That Whee! last sound there. What was okay. that? Was that the sound of your dragon or the sound of you communicating with your dragon in the dragon tub? Well, don't be a fucking idiot, Justin. Of course, it was me speaking to my dragon. He okay. speaks to me telepathically. And you speak to him with through the, the dragon tub. It's a one-way telepathic link. Read a book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry, that sound sounded so much different from your other command. Well, he I said don't know a different that's... word, Justin. That was me that saying, was a... can you believe this fucking guy? Okay. And he, he telepathed back, <laughs> yeah, a real jag. <laughs> that's one of the judgier dragons I've encountered. Honestly, he barely knows me. Yes. No, Justin. He says he went to fifth grade with you. Are you still here? Or are you flying on a dragon? Well, you keep calling us back with your inane questions. <laughs> now I'm going to ride this dragon into space. <laughs> oh, damn it. He did say he found all the Earth animals. <laughs> so he's going to look for other ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's gonna die up there as soon as he gets out of where he's the air is. He's gonna die up there. That last sound translated to, if I've picked up a little bit of dragon tongue, I think that last sound translated to, we're going all the way to space, baby. That's right, Papa David, don't need no more oxygen. Yeah. I'm good. I miss them. I miss them too, and I miss our listeners who sadly have to depart from us now that we've completed this episode oh, of My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Uh, we've had just a hoot. We hope you're hanging in there. I hope you're uh, feeding all your worries and cares to the anxiety alligator mm -hmm. who will chomp them up and swallow them down and whisk them away so you don't have to stress about them anymore and just try to hang in there, pals, and uh, go vote. Yes, please. please. God, Fucking go vote for Joe Jesus Biden. Christ. Vote Biden. Especially, I hear y'all in Texas are trying to trying to pull off a sneaky oh, little, we're doing a sneaky little job. Don't tell them. Don't only tell, tell only tell folks who are down with it, with Joe and his tight fanny. Just get out there and punch in the thing for Joe's tight fanny, and let's ride this baby to Blue Town, and fucking embarrass that the, 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 the spanker, the spanky. It's gonna be. I can't wait for November third when y'all are like. Number one, Texas has turned blue. Number two, there is a basement at the Alamo. We are so oh, sorry no. that we were not truthful about that. Yeah. Um. Thank you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song, It's a Departure, off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Uh, great tracks and tunes on that one. Lots of lots of premium cuts on that one. Can I, and thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. I just want to tell you about uh, two great McElroy podcasts that maybe you're not listening to. First, there's one that uh, my wife Teresa and I are doing where we are talking about the new season of Great British Bake Off. It's called Bake On. You can find it on your podcatchers, and we also put it up on our YouTube channel. Uh, and also Besties, which Griffin and Justin do with Russ Frushtick and Chris Plant. This week they talked about spooky games, uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, but you guys didn't talk about the one with the sanity meter that I believe was on Dreamcast? or PlayStation uh, It was GameCube, it was Eternal Darkness, Game and I did talk Cube. about it. What? Uh, thank, thank you, you for listening. I, really I, I do active. listen. It's my favorite podcast. Uh, one of my favorites. I mean, I enjoy several. Uh, also, I want to tell you lots of great merch on there. You're running out of time to get uh, the October pin of the month, which is the Tiger on the Table pin designed by Sam Schultz, which benefits the Marsha P. Johnson Institute and the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. Uh, but you can still get that Sawbones Horseshoe Crab shirt, the Candle Knights ornament designed by Lynn Doyle, the Candle Knights wrapping paper by Justin Gray, the Jump Scare pin, the Thanks for Vibing and Keeping It Tight t-shirt, all of that at McRoyMerch.com. You can pre-order our new upcoming podcast book everybody has a podcast except you which will teach you how to make a podcast that you are proud of you can pre-order that at the McElroy podcast book.com comes out january 26 2021 we put jokes in that by the way yeah. if even if you don't want to do a podcast you just want to read a book that we wrote like it's fun we put jokes we put in jokes it. it's good 
You'll like it. Uh, You'll like you can it. also pre order The Adventure Zone Crystal Kingdom, book four of our graphic novel series, uh, at theadventurezonecomic.com. Uh, that comes out July 13th, 2021. Do you want a Yahoo final one? Yeah. Sure. This one was sent in by Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. It's uh, Yahoo Answers user anonymous. God, y'all. Um, I'll, I'll call them uh, Legion. Legion asks, would you think that Dame Judy Dinch might occasionally visit this royalty category and offer an answer under an alias? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There's no way she fucking doesn't. <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy, or I, am I? I'm Griffin, I'm Dame Griffin J Dinch McElroy, Radio Shack. <laughs> This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad, squirrel on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported. We interrupt the podcast you're listening to to tell you about another podcast. That's right. We got this with Mark and Hal. That's correct, Mark. This is Hal. We do the hard work for you, settling all of the meaningless arguments you have with your friends. So tune in every week on the Maximum Fun Network for We Got This with Mark and Hal. And all your questions will be asked and answered. You're welcome. All right. That's enough of that. We got this.